Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Basic Part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to understand the reason for tetravalency of carbon and the shape of organic molecules. We will understand how to write the structures of organic molecules in various ways. We will classify organic compounds based on their behaviors. We will understand the IUPAC system for nomenclature of organic compounds. We will understand the concepts of organic reactions. We will also explain the influence of electronic displacements and on this we will understand the reactivity of organic compounds. We will also recognize different types of organic reactions. We will learn the techniques for purification of organic compounds. We will write the chemical reactions involved for the quantitative analysis of organic compounds and we will also understand the principles involved in the quantitative analysis of organic The first question that comes to our mind is what is organic chemistry because this whole chapter is organic chemistry. So the first question is what is organic chemistry? So organic chemistry as per definition is nothing but a chemistry sub-discipline, this, uh, this sub-discipline of chemistry which involves in scientific study of structure, properties and reaction of organic compounds. So if you talk about organic compounds, that is you talk about the structure of organic compounds, you talk about the properties, the reaction of organic compounds and organic material, that is organic chemistry. So what is organic compound? Organic compound is nothing but they are matter in which we have various carbon atoms that, that has various forms of carbon atoms. And there is the exception to it if you see that, for example, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide has carbon, they are not part of organic chemistry, they are part of inorganic chemistry, right? So, for example, carbides, carbonates, carbon dioxide, cyanides, these are also diamonds and graphite, they also have carbon, but they are inorganic. Other than these, most of the carbon compounds are part of organic chemistry. For example, CH4 is methane, right? C2H6, ethane. All these are, for example, benzene I have, all these are part of organic chemistry. But these carbon oxides of carbon, carbonates, carbides, cyanides and allotropes of carbon, these are part of inorganic chemistry, correct? So it says that organic chemistry is nothing but study of organic compounds, but organic compounds, organic compounds are nothing but, I mean, which has carbons in various forms and the exceptions are carbides, carbonates, Oxides of carbon, cyanides and allotropes of carbon. Now the next question comes to our mind is, we know definition of organic chemistry. Question is why should we study organic chemistry? So if you see the petrol, the fuel, right, which we use, right, is a fuel, the petrol, diesel, the gasoline. See, this is nothing but organic material. The petrol is an organic material, it has carbon compounds. And to understand these, we need to know organic chemistry. If you talk about the coal, coal is also nothing but organic compound. If you talk about clothes we wear, right, the cotton, the textiles, they are also nothing but organic. If you see the medicines, most of the medicines which we consume are nothing but organic materials. Right? They are made of carbon, hydrogens and other compounds. So, so most of the medicines which we use in our daily life are organic materials. The DNA, the deoxy ribonucleic acid that is very critical for our blood, skins, muscles and that is something which uh, which is responsible for our similarity with our parents, right? So if you see right, uh, a lot of children have same faces as the parents and the characters are also same. So these things are done by DNA and DNA is also nothing but my organic compound. If you see the dyes which is used to color oh, clothes and different stuff, they are also nothing but organic material. So, so we have wide application of organic material in day to day life. So it's good to understand organic chemistry. It's good if you think why the car runs, right? So the, the, the basic uh, part in that is there's something called petrol or diesel which parts, right? And they, which gives uh, energy and then the, the, mechanic, the chemical energy is going to do electrical or uh, mechanical energy. But the first question is why, let's suppose carbon when it burns, it gives energy. Why petrol when it burns, it gives energy. To understand those things, it's good to understand the organic chemistry because the petrol is nothing but organic compound. So since organic compound has huge application in our day to life, it is good to understand organic chemistry. So 
as i told you the definition of organic compound was nothing but the compound which has carbons but with some exception now why this word organic came from where this organic word came so there's a good history for that let's see this the science of organic chemistry is almost 200 years old i think it was around 1780s where uh, the scientists began to differentiate between organic and inorganic chemistry and if you see right yeah around 1780 this uh, scientists begin to differentiate or chemists begin to differentiate between organic and inorganic and for them organic was something which was derived from the plants and animals if you see the word resembles right organic the moment you think of organic now you think of natural things with our plants animals we see right organic food and the moment you talk about inorganic you you talk about compounds which are prepared from mineral sources so this was the basic uh, category where you no know, in around 1780s chemists began to differentiate or you know put various uh, things in two buckets one is organic compound inorganic compound organic compound means something which is derived from plants and animals or the natural thing natural thing right natural from plant and animal and inorganic something which is from minerals right from mines so this was the differentiation parameter in 1780 and they believed that time that there was something called vital force which was responsible for organic compound formation of organic compound. you see they used to say that organic compound is something which derived from plant and animal and that's what it was assumed that there is a vital force which was responsible for formation of organic compounds and it was assumed that you cannot prepare this in lab right so this guy berzelius this is a swedish chemist he proposed that there is a vital force that is responsible for formation of organic compounds it is formed in the nature from the plant and animals and uh, we can't prepare this in lab this was a notion please note this was a notion and this was an incorrect notion actually this was a notion by berzelius a swedish scientist or chemist that there is a vital force that is responsible for formation of organic compound but this notion was rejected in 1828 by Wohler, when he synthesized or prepared the organic compound that is urea, is a very common organic compound which is used as fertilizer from the inorganic compound that is ammonium cyanate. So if you see, ammonium cyanate is a inorganic compound, and he prepared urea. This is a organic compound, right? So he prepared this urea from a inorganic compound. So from or inorganic, he prepared organic in the lab, and thus the notion was. broken so it was now confirmed that there is no vital force that is responsible for formation of organic compounds even in the labs you can prepare organic compounds so this is a great achievement actually in 1820 it broke the notions and with that more and more organic compounds were synthesized in the lab and as i told most of the medicines we see the organic compounds are all synthesized in the labs and that's thus the world is organic came because organic earlier It was assumed that this category of compounds are derived from plants and animals. And further, once he created this urea, and then the acetic acid and the methane, all these things were further synthesized in the lab from an organic source. So you see, methane is a organic compound, acetic acid is a organic compound. So both these are organic compound. and both of these were prepared or synthesized from inorganic substance in the lab by these chemists so hope you understand why those word organic came because earlier they differentiated based on what is the source so if it is from plants and anim animals they used to call it organic compounds if it is from minerals it is called inorganic compounds but the early definition which i gave was for organic compound was organic compound is something which is made of carbon and some other compounds that is true because they observed that most of this things which are derived from plants and animals has carbon hydrogen so they gave a new definition so now let's see the sources of organic compounds the first is the plants from plants we get organic compounds as i told the next is animals from animals also we get organic compounds from the petroleum from petroleum also we get organic compounds and the coal so these are the four sources of organic compounds correct plants animals petroleum and coal let's talk about the classification of organic chemistry so organic compounds is classified into two parts the aliphatic compounds and cyclic compounds aliphatic is 
a chain one, like a chain, there is no ring. Cyclic is in the form of cycle. Maybe something like this, something like this. We'll explain more. So, aliphatic is nothing but a straight chain. Cyclic is in the form of cycle. If you talk about cyclic compound, it can further be classified as heterocyclic and homocyclic compounds. So homocyclic means the cycle will have only carbon. For example, if I have cycle of something like this, we'll talk about these uh, more. Uh, a cycle of carbon and hydrogens here. If you see, only the cycle has only carbon. In heterocyclic, it, have, it can have other thing also. For example, I have uh, this compound. This is oxygen here. Right? Tetrahydrofuran. Or I can have something like this. This is a nitrogen here. This is called piperidine. We'll talk about these things actually later. But just understand this in homocyclic, only carbon in chain. It is not that it has had only carbon, can have other compounds, but in the chain, it can have only carbon. For example, here it can have OH also, here it can have nitrogen also, but in the chain, it will have only carbon. And it can have a non carbon. In chain. Example here in the chain we have oxygen, here we have nitrogen. So that is heterocyclic and homocyclic. Homocyclic also is now further classified into alicyclic and aromatic. See, alicyclic is just cycle with no aroma, and this aromatic has a smell actually, it's a very good smell, and also it has 4 and plus 2 pi electrons delocalized. We will talk more about this. For example, if you see benzene, right? It is something like this because there are some electrons delocalized. We will talk more about these. Uh, and these are alicyclic, for example, this one. We have cyclobutane or we have cyclohexane. So in this case, they don't have any aroma also and they don't have any uh, pi electrons delocalized. They, their property is similar to this guy. So these guys property and these guys properties are all same. Only thing is that they have ring, but the properties are same. We'll talk more about these in details actually. Similarly in heterocyclic uh, also we have alicyclic and aromatic. So alicyclic you see all have similar properties and aromatic has a smell. So aroma, the moment we talk about aroma, right? Aroma means smell, aromatic has smell and also it has 4n plus 2 pi Sorry, two pi electrons. Yeah, four plus two pi electrons. And then in the heterocyclic, we have benzenoid and non-benzenoid. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.